Israel pulled off some James Bond level military attack. Apple processors are now being made in America by TSMC. The Three Mile Island nuclear plant is going to restart because of a deal with Microsoft. And independent directors from the company 23andMe resigned from the board. And a whole lot of other tech news. And of course it's me, your favorite person, Chisong the Great. Imagine this. You're a terrorist just chilling in Lebanon, doing some terrorist shit, and you get a call from your homie to talk about more terrorist shit. And then you have no dick. This is exactly what happened in Lebanon over the past month, with pages belonging to the terrorist group Hezbollah detonating across the country. Israel is keeping quiet, but we know that Mossad is behind this. And this is some James Bond level intelligence work. I know what you're thinking, this is a tech channel. Why am I talking about national security defense and the never ending war in the Middle East? It's about the implications that this attack has on the supply chain. This is my iPhone, a very old iPhone. I think it's five years old. And that's exactly why you should subscribe so I can get a new one. But the supply chain needed to make this phone and get it in my hands is remarkable. That supply chain is probably more complicated than a Christopher Nolan movie. In order for this phone to get to me in Portugal, it had to be shipped to me by Bangladeshi boats, assembled by Chinese factory workers. And before any of that even happened, the raw materials had to be mined by poor Congolese child labor. Now this is where things get wild. Imagine if during any part of that supply chain, someone decided to sneak something in. And now I'm not talking about the morality of what happened in Lebanon, because when it comes to war, all bets are off. Human rights and crimes against humanity are all fake. And war is the only time that we're honest about that. But what we are seeing in real time is the breakdown of the dream of globalization. The idea of globalization was actually beautiful and simple. All be too busy watching American TV, using Chinese made gadgets, and wearing clothes made by poor Bangladeshi child labor. Why does our supply chain have so much child labor? What is happening? Turns out there's some bugs in this system, and I would not be surprised if this is the future of warfare. Human beings have always had to contend with biological warfare. We have fought plagues, we have fought diseases since the dawn of human civilization. But are we ready for a world where all your devices and increasing everything is becoming a device, especially one that is connected to the internet, can be used against you either by countries that are your adversaries or literally by tech companies trying to exploit you as much as possible. And this has probably been happening for forever. We all know our phones are spying on us. We all know these things are happening with software, but there is something very primal about our hardware being used against us. Men have fought wars since the dawn of time against each other for land, property, women, but now it's being fought by drones, cyber attacks, and supply chain infiltrations. How do you think governments should respond to the fact that this is the frontier of warfare. Comment below if you actually would like a video on the future of war, because that's an idea I think about very, very, very often. Speaking of supply chains, let's talk about some good news coming out of Arizona that could impact the future of computing. TSMC's first Arizona-made chips are now in production. Yes, Arizona, the place you go when you've given up on life. And guess who their first customer is? Yeah, the company that we all are already addicted to, Apple. For those who don't understand why this is such a big deal, let's take a not so brief history lesson. Where is China? And I'm actually being very serious with this question. If you look at the map of the world, where is China? Yes, there is the big country that is China, but there is actually a second China. There is the People's Republic of China, which is the mainland, and there is the Republic of China, which is known as Taiwan. Technically, Taiwan has been its own separate entity since World War II. Let me tell you something. If you're watching this channel, I want you to know that there is no singular topic that I will not bring World War II inside. Like, I don't care what we are talking about. I will find a way of making World War II relevant to the topic. Superglue? Yes, that was created by a scientist who wanted to make tools for the military for World War II. McDonald's? started by World War II veteran. The end of the British Empire, yes, it was ravaged post-World War II and just could not maintain its colonies everywhere. Post-World War II, after the defeat of the nationalist forces by the communists in mainland China, Shanghai Shek's government then retreats to Taiwan. This sets the stage for the complex relationship that we have happening today. Now let's come back to the present. Today we are in the AI renaissance. We don't know if Claude, OpenAI, we just don't know which company will win the AI race. But we already know who is chilling at the finish line, and that is Daddy Jensen Wong, the company that is literally fueling the AI revolution. And guess who makes all the chips for NVIDIA? TSMC. And guess where TSMC is headquartered? Taiwan. Remember when COVID happened and we all had to contend with the fact that our supply chain was so fragile? Well, if anything happens to Taiwan, I remember when I was working like in as a software engineer, conventional tech, and we called this problem the bus factor. You basically never want a situation where if one person gets hit by a bus, 
Nobody knows how to maintain a tool or software or just knows how it works. TSMC is that one software engineer and the bus is about to be mainland China. In 2022, the CHIPS Act was passed with the goal of increasing semiconductor manufacturing domestically. So they threw a shit ton of money at the problem and that is how we ended up in Arizona. Wait, I, I know you're all thinking, if chips start getting manufactured in Arizona, does that mean that the new iPhone will be like $7,000? No, inflation was already going to cause that. But what it does mean is that the entire future technological revolution will not be contingent on a small island nation that is consistently under threat. Chips are the cornerstone of our current technological era. But in China's defense, they don't really need to worry about chip manufacturing happening in America because those engineers for TSMC are not gonna get work visas to come anyway. So moving on to our next story, in a plot that has the makings of a Black Mirror episode, also another tangent, please leave Black Mirror for the British people. I do not want to watch an episode of Black Mirror where I hear anybody that does not have a British accent. I want those kids who went to those training schools, those grounds where like, what do you call them, theater camp? No, there's like an actual important one where they go to learn how to act. I don't know what the name of those things are, but send those ones to Black Mirror. I want that girl that has nothing to her name and this is her one chance to make it acting in Black Mirror. I don't want to see any celebrities there. Give that wimpy British man that has literally two cents to his name to act in Black Mirror. If I hear an American accent, I'm not watching. Anyway, back to Black Mirror in real life. Microsoft just inked a deal with the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant to restart it to basically fuel the AI revolution. This already sounds like a disaster, but imagine if we end up causing some kind of nuclear accident because we wanted to be able to make this. Yes, this is that Three Mile Island, the one that changed public perceptions about nuclear. And I am a techno futurist. Like I think we should push all this forward as forward as possible. I think we should accelerate to the future. I would much rather have a world where we are using all our high tech energy to solve diseases like cancer, to, to break apart the limitations we have on our current knowledge. I just fear that like, what if the AI is only able to make this? We all know that their energy needs required to train AI and we're currently in an arms race to make AGI. So whatever needs to be done to provide the compute and the energy to do so, the tech companies are going to do so. We also know that nuclear actually solves some of the problems we're currently having with other forms of energy. It is cleaner than coal and gas, it is more reliable than solar, and it is more scalable and like smaller than actually wind. Sam Altman owns a stake in Oklo, a small modular reactor company. Bill Gates has a huge stake in TerraPower Nuclear Reactor Company. Amazon recently purchased a nuclear adjacent data center from Talian Energy. Oracle announced that it's designing data centers with small modular nuclear reactors. I would like to reiterate, as somebody who wants to live in an energy abundant future, I want to have enough energy to run my own nuclear power plant in my backyard. I don't want to live in an abundant future. So I am pro anything that pushes that future. I also know that an energy abundant future is a safer one. Any society without consistent energy is a failed one. However, I also know that we are in the worst timeline. Ever since they shot Harambe, the timeline has kind of gone, you know, and I feel like we're going to end up only being able to make. Speaking of our broken timeline, there is only one company that can tell you if you have a brother in the Philippines that you do not know about or help you find a murder suspect. And that company is 23andMe and it is not looking good. 23andMe's promise was amazing. You spit in a tube and it would give you personalized health recommendations. It would tell you about your ancestry, but also let you know which diseases you're prone to, which drugs you could take, just actually personalized healthcare. And all you needed to do was spit in a tube. It was meant to be like WebMD, but with your personalized genes, not your unmedicated paranoia schizophrenia. And there was a time where it was so popular, like all the celebrities and all the people in tech were using it. And after it was able to raise multiple rounds, it drove the price of a kit from $9.99, basically $1,000 to just, I think like a hundred. At its peak valuation, it was worth $6 billion. Today, the company is at risk of being delisted by the New York Stock Exchange. So how did this happen? Did the company put all this money in crypto coins? No, that would have been smarter. But between wild health claims that got them called out by the FDA, a data breach, expensive medical research, multiple tech layoffs, and actually being used to catch a serial killer, you have a recipe for a disaster or just losing most of your company's value. Serial killer, you, you have a recipe for a disaster or just losing most. We're about to enter an era where every single company who wants to squeeze every dollar out of you in the name of subscriptions, it is going to do so. 
And unfortunately, when you get your health data, you don't really need to buy that spit stick anymore. Like how many times can 23 and me tell me that I'm a 100% bad bitch? And now independent board members have written a letter to the CEO and resigned. I know things are bad at 23 and me headquarters, but I am about to make them worse. 23 and me's saving grace is that maybe some of their drug trials actually lead to some groundbreaking medication. Let me spoil the test for everyone in the planet. If you're from Korea, you're only from Korea. If you're from Brazil, you're from everywhere. If you're Asian, you're whatever your parents say you are. If you are worried about a deadly disease in your family, good luck, you already have it. If you're Jewish, you're either 100% Ashkenazi Jewish or there's some forged documents in your family history. And if you need to get into college, you're 1.2% Cherokee. And if your dad was young and beautiful in the summer of 1988, you have siblings that you do not know about. Go find them. Rapid fire, let's go through the rest of the news. Johnny Ive has confirmed that he'll be working on advice with OpenAI, and we all know who they should be afraid of. Hearts Against Humanity is suing Elon Musk for allegedly taking over a piece of land that he bought to prevent the border wall from being built on it. X Twitter, whichever one you call it, that has officially left California and moved its headquarters to Texas. Congratulations, Texas, you are now the home of the internet's mental asylum. Link is training AI on the content on its site, which is bizarre because everything on LinkedIn is already being written by bots. YouTube confirms that your past screen is not fair games for ads. If you made it this far, I wonder why I'm LinkedIn talking a little weird. AI no, I did not AI have a stroke. Content. I had something far worse, which was a wisdom tooth removal. If you want to watch someone sprung out on painkillers talking about stories in tech, please subscribe. And if you're a company that has far more marketing spend than you have since, LinkedIn is training AI, my content. Content. Training AI, AI on the content. Link to that will be below.